Alléluia. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. If we can pray in tongues for a few minutes, Ye katara mara katara basi, re katara baso kotoro baba, re katoro bobo bobo rokote katoro bo, re katoro mo rokote ra baba baba baba, re katara masi ketere babo kotoro baba. Thank you Jesus. Oh thank you Lord. Oh thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good evening, Pastor. How are you? We are very blessed. Amen. And uh, our pilot is on his way. Yes, by the grace of God. Amen. 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 Well done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Right, are we waiting for pastor or no, we're, we're gonna start? Amen. Okay, let's go. Let's fire away. Welcome everybody. Amen. Welcome all, everybody. I'm not sure if the telegram is actually on because it looks like uh, it might have gone off. Yeah. Uh, before that, it was working, so I'm not sure what's Amen. happened. Yeah. Hallelujah. We bless the Amen. name of the Lord. In yes. Jesus' name. Yeah. We, we're committing this uh, meeting to the hands of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. He says in the book of Genesis 1 that the Spirit was hovering and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Holy Spirit, breathe. Breathe on all channels. Breathe. Let the breath of the Father be released and let it touch many hearts tonight. Amen. Give us understanding, O Lord. Take the stage, Lord. Now your way. Just your vessels. Nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory, for we are satisfied just to see you glorified. Holy Spirit, take the stage. Have a Breathe the breath of. Say the word that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. Let lives be released into our hearts and overflow of your very life, O oh Jesus, Son of God, the root of David, the one who made us to be priests and kings unto our God. 
grace unto the seven spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been tremendously, tremendously blessed with this teaching of the anointing. Amen. Amen. That's true. I believe, especially um, currently, with what is happening in the body of Christ. That is very true. Where the emphasis is only on the anointing and not on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Of the Spirit. Spirit. So we looked at Galatians 5. That says the fruit, and he uses S, the fruit of the Spirit is, amen? Amen. The fruit of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Galatians 5, verse 20. But the fruit, but in some version you, will, you, you have S at fruit. Yeah. Which version is it? Oh, sorry, I'm just uh, trying a new one. But, um... But the fruit of the Spirit is. So he's telling us that the basis of the fruit, of all the fruits, Galatians 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, and then he tells you joy, peace. Yeah, love, <laughs> That's why gentleness. the Word of God is, they are spirits. You cannot, because if you look at this English normally, he yeah. would have said the fruits of the spirits are, isn't it? Correct. But he says love because love is the foundation it's not, and Jesus is love. Because it's Amen. not plural, it's yes. singular. It's singular. That's right. So Jesus is love. Love is the foundation. And Jesus is love. And he says in the book of Ephesians 2 that is that foundation. Everything is built on the foundation of Christ. Amen. Amen. So the foundation, I love the way our pastor explained it, that the foundation, the, the very essence of the anointing starts with the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. It does not start from the anointing. Yeah. But it starts from the fruit of the spirit, which is love. Yeah. And then after love, you have all the rest that comes. The way I see it is like a color. So we have dark blue yeah. with all the yeah. other blue colors. Okay, right. So the spectrum of uh, colors. Of colors. Yeah. So Amen. from various shades, it goes from dark to light. To light. Yeah. Amen. So love is the basis, the foundation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So the fruit of the Spirit is actually the foundation of the anointing, the foundation of receiving the Spirit of the Lord, of receiving the anointing. Amen. Amen. That will enable you to do the work of Christ. Amen. Amen. Yep. So Amen. we want to turn it upside down now. Okay. Which is so so important. It's not even now because like Pastor was explaining, Jesus started from the fruit. He started exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit, even when he was with the disciples. Amen. Amen. That's what he started showing. The fruit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Amen. Amen. Um, so he was saying love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, Amen. goodness, faith, meekness. Temperance Amen. against such there is no law. 
So it is the emphasis is not on the anointing but on the fruit. The mm -hmm. fruit. I was um on Saturday when I went to uh, this shop to buy some African food. And I met this man there who was just um, he was actually um buying some nice uh, bottle of alcohol as well <laughs> yeah. and uh, he, he was telling me that he's human i said but what is the meaning of you know oh thank you Holy Spirit. i said but what is the meaning of that he said anyway there's what is happening currently in churches is just absolutely non nonsense nonsense yes so uh i'm human and with all due respect uh I said, but um, you cannot put everyone in the same basket. Right. You need to know your God. Amen. Amen. So that's what I was trying to explain to him, but he was just, he just didn't want to even hear anything. I think that is probably down the fact that um, whatever's happening in the body of the Christ right now is actually letting down the kingdom okay there are two things um, there are two things here so number one the scripture also says that you shouldn't be a stumbling block to your brother let's yeah. look at, at this um, let's look at the scripture so it's Romans 14 Romans 14. Um, 13 to 23. Let me see exactly mm -hmm. where it is. Kalo Kotoro Vasikiti. Romans 14. Look into the verse. Would you say to me? So, um, so Romans um, 14, verse 14. Yeah, 14. Yeah. One, four, yeah. Romans 14, verse. from verse 13, it says, Therefore, no. let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to be a stumbling block or an hindrance in the way of our brother. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. So when it talks about if there is something that you eat mm -hmm. and it is... He can make your brother to lose his salvation. Just don't do it in front of him. Amen? Amen. So it is the same thing for those who are actually um, either leaders or not, not leaders who are actually doing things that is discouraging people from following Christ. Yeah, because that's what I was saying. That itself is giving they, a bad publicity yes they are yeah. they are stumbling blocks they don't realize but they are stumbling blocks and they will have to answer to god especially those leaders who are doing that yeah that for sure but there is another thing as well is that i also believe that for someone to turn his back on jesus because of someone else has not actually had a real relationship with God. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he would. Amen. Um, yeah. Because he says that we have the Spirit of God in us that enable us to understand the things of God. Let's go to um, that scripture. So we went to Romans 14, yeah. verse 13 13. to 23. I know we shouldn't be like a standing block to one another. Yeah. Amen. Like um, <clears throat> if there is something that you believe that it is clean amen yeah but your brother may disagree with you disagree with yeah. you and that can even make him to fall it's like currently um uh maybe to me uh that's my opinion it's not even some something that should be we should debate about it but uh, some people have discussion about it and all that. Yeah. Like about uh, Chris, Christian uh, should still be able to drink alcohol. Uh, 
I look at the book of Philippians that says everything that is good, everything that is profitable, think of of on of those things. Mm. So what will alcohol give you, profit you for the advancement of the kingdom? Because I say it clearly, I say even outside the church, yeah. society has decided that somebody who drinks a particular percentage of alcohol, his judgment is not the same as when he hasn't drunk. He's an, he is an impaired judgment, yes. So, impaired sense, yes, so yes. what do you want to argue? So this is very clear. Yeah, that's right. So why would you take something that will make you do something that is not of God? Because that's what it can lead you to do. Correct. So what would you argue about something like that? <laughs> uh, why, for example, alcohol is a spirit? They call it spirit. But you know, you go buy a whiskey. They, it's yeah, it's like a, a it's a drink. Yes, it's called. But, but there's a reason why it's called a spirit because, like you said, it can influence you to do something yes. that you do not want to do. Yeah, that you do not. So why will you? So tell me, my brother. Yeah, you got saved. Yeah. The Bible says in the book of Colossians that He has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. light. Already, when you got saved, let me tell you. Like Pastor was saying, the devil is not happy that you've left its kingdom. He wants to pull you down. Yeah. So there is already a long journey in front of you. Right. So you need to choose things that will help you already. On the way. And separate was yourself from anything that will not be an advantage for your journey. Because it is a long journey. Of course it is. Yeah. Anything you can, any decision you can make that will avoid you falling, make those decisions because the journey is long, my brother. So, and it's long so, and it's yes, narrow. And he has so. seen, yes, he has seen what God wants to use you for. Let me tell you, he will use, he will, now he is arranging things yeah. to bring you down, arranging things. So now what, what, what are you supposed to do? Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and then make decisions that will not make you to fall. Why should you go and drink something that will make you, uh, that will uh, hinder your your the judgment your progress, that you're so, yeah, so right. supposed to have? So to me, it's not even a debate. No, of course not. <laughs> but you see people debating about this, and I'm like, you 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 don't realize. That we are wrestling. Yeah. If you want to be honest, from the time you gave your life to Christ, the wrestling has started, started. if you don't know. Yeah. There is another kingdom that wants you down. In the journey, maybe not for some, but at the beginning of my journey, my journey has not been straight. If I knew the words that I know now. Yeah. So that's when I know that for sure when you give your life to Christ, there is somebody who is not happy up, who wants to bring you down. Yeah. So what will you... It's a no-brainer. Exactly. Shouldn't, you shouldn't be... Um... So, um, so to some people, if they see... Um, um, because I, I've, got, I've got a... I've got a, a a friend who she still likes her wine, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, there is somebody uh, that she was supposed to minister to. And uh, the, when the woman saw it, the woman could not even believe that it was for her. Wow! So she had to hide it from her because she said, "Oh, if she sees it, she won't." receive my ministration anymore yeah. because that would be a stumbling block. Right. And then I just leave that for her to uh, be ministered to. But for that particular reason, for that, um, for the woman, she wanted to make sure that the fact that the woman sees her drinking does not represent a stumbling block to her Christianity. So well, that's very important. Well, that's right. But like you said, um, 
but she, she's she's not even supposed to even do it as That's far right. as I know. Yes. But uh, at least she considered the fact that um, someone's uh, salvation else's, yeah, is, based is at on, stake. Correct. So uh, let me make sure because that one is even God will even judge you more for that. Yeah. Because you've considered you've, somebody yeah, else's. Yeah, you open up yourself to be used for someone's Christian salvation to be lost. Yeah. Yeah. So um you mean so, avoid it being lost. Yeah, that's right. To, yeah. To make sure that the person is not uh you know the Christianity about, is yeah. not shaken yes. and all that. So um, that's why the Bible says that judgment will start it will start from the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So then now the other point now is okay, we shouldn't be a stumbling block to our brother. But he says also in the book of um, Corinthians that we have the Spirit of God that make us to understand the things of God. Let me look for, for that scripture. 1 Corinthians 2. I think it's 1 Corinthians. Let me, let me be sure of the scripture. understand the things of So Kutoruba Seku We have the Spirit of God which makes us to understand the things of God. Amen. Amen. So now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given, yes, to us of God. So That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2, 2 verse 12. Okay. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Verse 13. 
Mm. Yeah. Which things also we speak, not in the words, which man's wisdom teacheth, but, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing the spiritual things with spiritual. Amen. Amen. So we have, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So if you have the spirit of God in you, you should have that fellowship. Amen. God wants us to fellowship with him through his son Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if you have that fellowship, you will never leave him. Amen. The Bible Amen. says nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Tribulation, absolutely nothing. So nothing can make you to be separated from him. Amen. Amen. No matter what people do, no matter whether it's a bishop or whoever, it shouldn't. It means if that has happened, it means, sorry to say, but it means you did not have that relationship with God. Amen. Yeah. I remember, the, I won't go into details, but um, something happened with, uh, uh, you know, a particular person who is like the leader of the church and things like that I went yeah. to God I went to God so you go to God mm -hmm. you and tell you God you speak to God you tell your daddy you said but the person came representing you that's why I trusted the person mm -hmm. so what do you have to do here God I want you to do something amen Amen. And that very that very day, even some people had some revelation and they told me. So you go and tell God, you said, I trusted that person because the person came in your name. That's true. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says nothing will separate you, nothing shall separate you. So what the person did should not separate you from God. You go in your closet and talk to God. Exactly. Amen? Amen. You go in your closet and talk to God and as much as we should also be discerning, we should have the word of God to yeah. understand, to know. Um, it says in the book of Hebrews that we need to exercise ourselves so that's how you are able to start discerning amen amen with the meditation of the word because if you you separate yourself from god because of what somebody has done who is the loser look at all the benefits that your daddy has left for you that you are losing who is losing it you are Amen. Who is losing it? Your your fellowship, that walk with him. Yes. I will never. I will. I won't leave that for anything. <laughs> Amen. That's true. That's true. Because the person is there. This is what he has done, and then you say, "Oh God," because this person came in your name, and he did that. I don't want to hear about you. Okay. Mm. Amen. You are False the one. You, yeah. Yes. That it is happening, but yeah. you are the one losing. Yes. It says in the book of Psalm 103 that we shouldn't forget all his benefits. Uh -huh. Loads of benefits for us. Loads of benefit for the one who believes in Christ. Loads of benefit for the one who is obedient. Loads of benefit for the one who walks with him. Psalm 103. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go there. So that's what you're losing. If you decide, so that man who was saying, oh no, today church is... Uh, my friend, if you say that, you are the one losing. Amen? Amen. It is not that pastor that you heard that you are not happy with who is losing. Yeah, is you it. are the one yeah. losing. Because he's already, some of them have even decided to even be part of the, the kingdom of darkness already. They, they don't have anything to lose again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but lost. you are the one losing because yeah. you're in the light and you're, yeah. you're seeking God. Yes. Some of them have just decided to just take pleasure in it. Amen. Because yeah. 
there is yeah there is one thing to um to commit something and then realize that i need to come out of it yes but there is another thing to do something and then you are pleasing yourself you are staying in it you are expanding in it Amen? Mm -hmm. amen So it says in the book of Psalm 103, verse 2, yes. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Recompense, benefits. Amen? Amen. So because you have believed in Jesus Christ, because you walk with God, yes. there are benefits for you. Amen. And you lose those divine benefits because of someone, yeah. yeah, but that's what's obviously happening. Yes, that's I know. What's happening. But you're not supposed so, to. Yes, so that, let them come back. If yeah. you are listening to us and it's happening to you, we are urging you to come back to God because it has got nothing to do with that person. It says in the book of Ephesians, chapter one, that he knew that um, he has predestinated you even before the foundation of the world. Wow. He has purposed you through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. He has purposed you. He has purposed you, um, my brother, for you to to um, to be that light where many people will be saved. That door where many people will be saved. That's what he has planned. So he's expecting you to come and fulfill it. Yeah. So now because someone has done something, oh, uh, you as, imagine you go to work and because uh, maybe they are distributing uh, biscuits, they didn't give you your biscuits. Sorry, I can't do any work today. <laughs> right? You go, be, because they didn't give you some biscuits, you, yeah. you will not perform the task that you're supposed to perform at work. <laughs> You won't do your part. Yeah. This is exactly what it well, is. It there, because that part that you're supposed to do is waiting for, for you. you. Yeah. It's true that no one is irreplaceable with God when he realizes that you are not doing what you're supposed to do. He will bring someone else. That's for sure. But the space was there for you. Yeah. The space was there waiting for you. In your... In, in the location he has put you in. That's why even when you even move location, you, you should even be led by God. Why? Because you are taking another person's task. Yes. If you are not where you're supposed to be. And you are leaving that task for another person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a chain reaction. Amen? Yeah. So, so let, let, let us remember that, yes, that's why we are trying to go back to the fruit of the spirit. The fruit are, are here. Is so is this is this one a man of God? Is this one I hear it so many times now? Amen. Amen. So let us go back to the fruit of the spirit. Oh, spirit yeah. The fruit of the spirit. And let, let us let us not be um, entangled. Let us not be blinded by the anointing. Amen? Amen. Let us not be blinded by the anointing. Amen. There is another um, one that I wanted us to look at. Amen. Amen. That's a beautiful one. My brother, would you like to read First Corinthians three verse three? First Corinthians three verse three. Kurabase ketere baba bara katara maso koto rubare kato rumuro keti kapoko ye katera maso koto ruma baba baba baba. Oh, 
Okay, my phone's just going in 10 seconds. Yeah, kata mabo ketere ba 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 ba. What is the verse again? 1 Corinthians. 3 verse 3. Le katoro ba 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 ba. 3 verse 3. Mm-hmm. For you are not, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Amen. 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 So, I, I really want us to uh, discuss this That's, particular because it's it's to do with the, the same thing we are talking about. Right. So, now it says, because there is strife and division among you, you are walking as men. Yeah. Okay. And if you remember when the disciples of, of, of Jesus were performing miracles, people said the gods have, have come unto us. Mm -hmm. I want to get the scriptures. The scripture. So Act 14, verse 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices and saying in the speech of Lycaonia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Act 14, 14. verse 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, mm -hmm. the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Let, let's look at two things here. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, he's saying that because we are walking carnally, we are not manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, we are walking as mere men. Mere men. Which means he expects us to walk as God. Yeah. And Acts 14 verse 11 is telling us that people were looking at them as God because of the miracles that Paul was performing. Amen? Yeah, amen. So, we need to remember that when it is not only when we perform miracles that we are working as God, but when we are able to demonstrate that we walk in the spirit, amen, amen, and not walk by the flesh, then we are not working as me and men, but as God, as God. yeah, because what is currently um, being talked about and uh, preach and all that is ye are God so the demonstration amen thank you that we are God is to manifest the fruit of the spirit not just yeah. the anointing the demonstration that we are God is to walk by the spirit let's go again 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3. Kabo kate katoro masikete babu katoro masikete babu. You know when 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 we minister about it, when we talk about it, people will be ministered to to start at least looking at it. But when, when all we talk about is the anointing, the demonstration of the power of God, those things are good. But let's it's true. Yeah, it's very true. important. That's why um, we have all this mess currently. Amen. Amen. Can you read it again? Hold on, I'm just mm. to it again. One second. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, 
Are you not carnal and walk as men? Amen. So he's telling you because you are carnal, yeah. you are walking as a man. So it is not because you are demonstrating the, the power of God through signs and wonders yeah. that will make you a God. Yeah. But the fact that you are able to walk by the Spirit and in the Spirit, it gives the example of envy, strife, yeah. division. Just that. Yeah. He's telling you that. You are not showing the character of God. God, yes. That is true. Amen. Amen. But we, we don't we don't we don't minister to people like that. As long as you you you, you are demonstrating healing and, and 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 signs and wonders. You can be called a God. But what about the demonstration of carnality, the flesh that we see in us? Yeah. That, Amen. That thing is obviously is the biggest conundrum. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we want to um, appeal and urge the church. To look into it. Correct. Amen. Yes. It um, is not just the anointing that will make you God, but demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit, where the foundation is love, the foundation is Christ, will make you a God. Amen. Amen. Because he said, when you do that, are you not? Walking as men, or you're supposed to walk as God. As God. As God. So when I hear it, I'm, I get very challenged. Amen. Amen. To make sure that I walk as God, which is it's those things are not easy, easy because I'm you need to say. put so many things off. But we are not ministered to on those things very often. Mm -hmm. yeah, you yeah. see when something we keep preaching about something we keep talking about it all those preachers who are you know who preach on, on TV and everywhere imagine if they were they kept ministering about those things what will happen yeah because they don't no The only emphasis is on other things. And it, unfortunately, they do the things that will attract people. That's yes. what they, tr they preach about. Correct. Because they want crowd. They want to increase the the funds. They want to increase... Uh, Excuse me. I'm going to cross the... Oh, cross the... Yeah, downstairs. Yeah. One second. Amen. Oh, you're not. Oh, okay. How long will you do this? How long will you do? Okay. All right. Thank you. The pastor is adjusting. Yes, I'm sorry. So imagine, imagine if they were talking to us about this. Mm. We are God. Amen. Yes, amen. I was um, watching before coming uh, a particular program. Mm -hmm. It's just very sad. Um, women from a particular country uh, in West Africa, where people tell them, I will pay for your ticket, I will pay for your travel cost. When you go there, all you need to do is to do a particular job and then you give me that money back. But when they go, the job that is waiting for them is prostitution. Uh, yeah, there's quite a few of that. Yes. 
and uh, they, what they are doing, they are spreading it all over Europe now. What I saw on that program, it was basically in uh, a particular country in Europe. It was in Italy. It is there. I'm not. Yeah. It is on TV there. Um, so they they were doing it in Italy only, and now they are spreading it. So they are taking those women from a particular country. I'm not going to say the yeah. name of the country. So because those women are desperate, even the, the mothers who send their daughters there, that, okay, you, you, I'm paying her travel costs, everything, but when she gets there, all I want her to do is to pay me back. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, the job that you are doing is prostitution. Because I read another uh, article it's actually like on a video of uh, the same situation where African women in general, yes. not just West African, but African and they were being sent to uh, Dubai. And in Dubai, uh, when they get there, there's nobody that gives them any accommodation. They sleep maybe about six or seven people in a room. And uh, the only option then the women have is to go to prostitution because they can't get a job um, as the so-called nannies or whatever other jobs that they were that were advertised when they left their home. Right. So that that is very sad because yeah. unfortunately um, some people have used the church to do yeah. some of those things. Yeah, hiding behind the church. Yes, that's right. So which is um there, there there is no it is absolutely uh there is no word for it either so um that that is very very bad in itself so we need to talk talk about those things so that we can start looking into ourselves amen mm -hmm. and put off those things and start working on ourselves that is so important. So um, that's why that the, the series that we've been uh, working on, which is um, the anointing, amen. You know? What the Spirit of God is trying to help us to do is to um, try and redefine the, what is important, the importance of the anointing, redefine the anointing. And you'll be surprised as we've been doing it, what mm -hmm. God has been doing, he's been using us for signs and wonders while we've not, that's not what, what we, you had primarily yes, done what, yeah. that, that was not even our focus. That's right. So what does that tell you? When you focus on the right thing, which mm -hmm. is the fruit of the spirit, he God will not, he will not pour. Add, yes. And it comes from him. Amen. And it stays and it's permanent. Amen. You saw, you saw what, what, what happened. Amen. Amen. So as we are talking about it, about the fruit of the Spirit, the importance of the fruit of the Spirit, the importance of putting off uh, the work of the flesh, yeah. the Lord is using us more for signs and wonders, which is what people, uh, people want, people are after. Yeah. It's a sign of the times, isn't it? Because everybody seems to want to um, see all these great so-called uh, that's what that call the miracles. I wouldn't yeah. even call the miracles. It's uh, just a showpiece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like now a drama. It's, like it's a, a drama. Yeah, now it's it's like a, it's like a it's show. Become, yes, that's right. It's like a drama. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's like a drama now. Yeah. And that, that's what it is now. And they, yeah. that's what they want to see. Yeah. So, ye are yet. Let, let's go a bit to um, <coughs> verse 1 and 2, if you can read it, please. I'm saying 1, one Corinthians yeah. 3. Yeah? Yes. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Amen. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, 
For, for hither, hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, are you not carnal and walk as men? Amen. Amen. So, he's saying that, Apostle Paul is even saying that, I've, I've not even been able to talk to you about this. Mm -hmm. Because you are still at that stage. Amen. Amen. So, I know we we're saying that men of God needs to start preaching and talking about it. But now Apostle Paul is saying that I'm not even able to talk to them about it because they are still there. Yeah. But uh, we need to really minister to the body of Christ about mm -hmm. it because to me it is alarming. Yeah. It is alarming. Everybody is uh, calling himself uh, all those different names now, yeah. all the, the, the fivefold prophet, apostle, yeah. and everything, and uh, no character, yeah. no all, foundation. They're all obsessed with title. Yes, no foundation, and uh, it is uh, it is alarming. It is definitely. So. Um, Is allowed me, so we pray that uh, we go back to to the basis. Amen. Yeah. Back to basis is again. Back to basic. Yeah. Back to basic to. Uh, it's going to be a difficult journey in itself again. Amen. But yeah. we have we have to go back to. That's right. We really need it's to. It's like it's a trial. It's a trial. It's a test. Amen. Yeah. So, um, want us to. So we are. We are still talking about. Yes, we are God. Yeah. But what makes us God? What do we do for us to be called God? Well. Um, Psalm 82, verse Psalm. 1 says, God standeth in verse 1, no? yeah. yeah. God standeth in the congregation, the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth amongst the gods. Amen. Amen. So we are, and if you go to verse 6. Yeah. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Amen. Amen. So ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. But we need to remember that it is not the anointing that is making us to be gods. Yeah. But it is walking not as carnal men, but as unto spiritual men, spiritual not... Sense. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Not in the flesh. When I look at that example, honestly, he said, because there are strifes and envying among you, yeah. divisions, which are things that we see always. Amen? Mm -hmm. We are part of it. Just because of that, you are just walking as mere men. This, that, this character that you are exhibiting make you to be just mere men. Yeah. I'm not talking about the anointing. I'm not talking about signs and wonders. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But I'm talking about division. I'm talking about you causing strife. Amen? Amen. So that should um, make us to... Um, meditate and tell ourselves hold on there is something that we need to do yes amen amen that something needs to be done 
because God is saying that there are divisions, strifes, and envy, just that make us not to be qualified as God's anymore. Amen. Amen? Yes, uh, so you are disqualified. Yeah. You are disqualified to be part of the gods that God, the spirit, the scripture is talking about here. Psalm 82, verse 6. I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So, because you are displaying those attributes, mm -hmm. amen, amen, you are disqualified as a God. Mm. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If we want, you, we can um, quickly go through um, Second Peter chapter one. From from verse three, Second Peter chapter one, from verse three. Kalamaso kote da ba 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 rakatara maso. De katoro mari ke peri ba ba. From verse three, Second Peter chapter one, from verse three. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whether I, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, mm -hmm. and to godliness brotherly uh, kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Amen. Amen. Verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That summarizes it all, isn't it? Yep. So they said, for if these things, so Second Peter chapter one, one verse, verse eight, verse three so to eight, verse yeah. three to eight. Yeah. For if these things be in you, if these things be in you, so when something is in you, it becomes part of you. Yeah. Amen. If these Amen. things be in you and abound, overflow. Mm -hmm. In you and abound. There's an overflow of it. They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the knowledge here is not just knowledge like I know history or geography. 
it is the knowledge of becoming one with Christ. The knowing, when they say uh, he knew his wife. Yeah. Knew his wife. The, the knowledge, the knowledge of becoming one with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I know I have a couple that I would have wanted to ask, but I can't say. Uh, if these things be one. in you. Yeah. So number one, we can go through it while we do a, do a final video. So if these things be in you. Mm -hmm. What thing? Let, let's list them. If these things be in you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Amen. So Amen. it's the same thing Second Peter chapter 1 is talking about from verse 3 here. Right? The divine power. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So if these things are in you and abound, so if these things be in you and abound in you, yeah. hmm, then you will not be unfruitful, neither will you be bad. So how do you do you think we can help for these things to be in us and abound in us? My brother. First of all. My brother with the same father. Amen. Amen. Um, first of all, the way I look at it is uh, reading scriptures and uh, understanding them, I think is important. Okay. Because when you understand the scriptures of the word of God, your um, faith becomes stronger. Your belief becomes stronger. And as such, you're able to, at that point, restrict and restrain yourself from going on the the other parts of stay, stay on the, the the path that is with light. Amen. So understanding, reading, meditating, yeah. understanding, allowing it to be in your heart. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. I like the book of Proverbs. Yes, such a powerful book. book. Such a powerful If this thing so what about what about what about um prayers praying in tongues? Oh yeah, that's important too. I would add praying yeah, in tongues. That's right, yes, that's important too. Because Just as important as the others. It helps you to it, it quicken yeah, your spirit. Quicken your spirit. Yeah. Quicken your spirit. Quicken your spirit. Because you know there is one thing that is an atmosphere yeah. that wants to pull you. So in that instance, power is needed to help you not to do the things. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Apostle Paul said. He said, sometimes I find myself doing the things that I don't want to do. How does that work? That's one point. Amen? Amen. Um, picking Let's up the slack. 
You got the scripture? Okay. That this is just beautiful. Yeah. So he said, sometimes I find myself doing, I think it's Romans. find myself doing the thing. Yes, Romans. Romans chapter 7 verse 11 uh, verse 15 God, I'm not so 15 So 15, eh? mm -hmm. First, that which I do allow, not. For what will, for what would that I do not, but what I hate, that do I. It's a mouthful. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. For that, we, okay. So. For that which I do, which I do, which I do, I allow not. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Okay, let's look at another version. So there is a, this this version says. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. What I hate, I do. <laughs> so here, this is where it comes, the principalities. And I, I was giving the example of um, uh, this, um, this particular... Uh, person when they were just about to give them the the the, the, the British they just went Maybe. yes and did something and yeah. they decided not to give it to them anymore even though after that they told them we're watching you yeah. but it just went and it got caught on something so something is pulling his destiny yeah that's definitely the case so there, there, there's another example they gave me they told me that there's a particular um, um director of a school or something like that in a in a particular school he's just been in that school when they they were about to um promote him mm -hmm. He went and took one of the young girls to do something with her when they were just about to promote him. Yeah. Wow. Exactly at that time. So there, there is a particular um, power. There is a particular. So th that's where th that's where we talk about like principalities, where the 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 environment the atmosphere some things are released in the air that will make people do things yeah. that they don't want to do they don't even so sometimes have you not um have you not felt sometimes you just feel that there's a particular spirit that is not of god that is released but you need to fight it you've never um Maybe you don't. You, let me let me yeah. let me let me explain yeah. to you. Yeah. Maybe you don't realize. Realize that. it, yes. So, all of a sudden, a thought that is not of God comes to your mind. Yeah, quite often. Tell, yes. Okay. So that's what that's it right. is, and you know you need to fight it. Mm. That's what it is. They they release. They come. They release. They come in thought. They come in thought. 
if you don't fight it, you are going to go ahead and do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're going to go ahead and do it. So that's what they do. They release, they release thoughts. And especially when the environment becomes polluted. Yeah. Over. <laughs> When the environment becomes polluted, you're going to see that some people start to have some feelings that are not, human not yes, not of the normal nature that God has even created us. Yeah. <laughs> becomes as thought and then become as thought. So you need to catch them. Yes. Otherwise, you need to rebuke them. You need yeah. to rebuke them. So that's why Apostle Paul supposed to say, but how come I find myself doing? So that's why I always say it is by the mercies of God all the time, his mercies. Because constantly we are into warfare. Constantly warfare, warfare. As Christians, we wrestle. Um, we wrestle as Christians. You need to understand that. Yeah. Um, Constant wrestling. Within your spirit. Yes. We wrestle. Somebody, it was someone who, um, she met this wonderful man who wants to take her to the altar and wants to honor her. But what does she do? She goes and be and faithful to him while he's even about to um, propose. propose. <laughs> yeah. Let Satan. Um... He, so he wants to, to yeah. make that woman to stay into that kingdom of darkness where she is. Definitely. Amen. Yeah. So at that very time, when well, that, that particular person, when he was about to receive his, uh, his uh, nationality, he went to do something that made uh, the government to cancel. Mm. So those are principalities. They are... Mm things in the air that will make you to do things that you're not supposed to do but it's as if you are being pulled have you not uh, have you not I wondered before to. sometimes you wonder if there are some people who are not pulled yeah. because uh, sometimes you wonder you think about why would you make decisions that will scatter your life The man with his family, everything, and then because of one little girl that he has seen, will just forsake his whole family, forsake everything, and go for that young girl and leave everything, be ready. I've seen that. Ready to forsake everything, the the life of the children, everything, and run after that young girl. I personally don't understand it, but why they do that? Patience is a virtue. No, virtue. but it, the, it it is not it is not them. I've seen so many fathers make some decisions that have affected the life, and this is affecting the lives of generations wow. because you affect the life of the children. Hello, Pastor. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So 
it is not that I'm, I'm, I'm not making them to be responsible for their action, but in a way, it is not them. Yeah. Amen. So for us to, so to, to summarize it, I want to say, for us to do those things that, welcome pastor, second welcome Peter to. is telling us to do, amen. amen, so that we can be fruitful yeah. in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. amen. So um, let's quickly uh, summarize to tell you what to so when we went to uh, Second Peter, chapter one, welcome. Yeah. Second Peter, chapter one, verse three to eight, where um, the Lord is telling us that when we do all those things, temperance and patience and all that, we'll be fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we said here the knowledge we're talking about is becoming one with Jesus. One with Jesus Christ, not just knowledge like history or geography, mm -hmm. but becoming mm -hmm. one with Him. So we're saying, okay, how how do we go about doing those things? How do we do that? So Jude, my brother Jude, was saying um, by reading the scriptures, yeah. by meditating, amen. So then we said, okay, we shouldn't forget prayer. Because prayer is the power that will quicken you. Because there are some forces out there. Even though you read your, the scripture. And you want to do what you saw in the scripture. Mm -hmm. There are some powers that will want to pull you. Right? To do those things that you know you don't want to do. Okay? And another thing that I wanted to add is. So reading the scripture. Consistently praying, praying without ceasing in tongues, praying without ceasing with understanding. The other thing that I wanted to, uh, which I believe is very important, your association, the people yeah. you, you move with. with. Yes. That's also very, very important. Make sure that there are, there's always somebody who will tell you, my friend, this is wrong. Yeah. You need to stop. Where are you going? Who is that woman? Yeah. Why do you think what do you think you're doing? Who is that man? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God will put people like that in your life to help you. It might not come via prayers, it might not come via dreams, it might come through somebody who will tell you off. Yeah. yeah. A, and I will call it a good friend. Yes. You need to stop that relationship that you are having. Mm -hmm. You're married woman. Yes. You're married man. Amen. Amen. And when he says that, even if when you go home, you think a bit. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. You will think a bit and God can use that person. So the people that you Hung you hung Associate. around with yes yeah, somebody who will be no 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 this is not on mm. to be with the brethren to not forsake the assemblies of the brethren even going to church and all that so all those things it keeps you yeah because god has not made us to be on our own, on our own. Yeah. to live on our own that's why as a church we come as a congregation correct amen that's why he wants the fellowship of the brethren. That's why he releases his anointing when that fellowship is there. Yeah. It's true that sometimes the fellowship could be contaminated, unfortunately, yeah. because you are dealing with different people, people. but it still does not mean that it, it has to be forsaken. We pray and clean it up, and the Lord will help us with it. Yeah. And it also depends on the leaders and all those things. Mm -hmm. That's how the congregation are led. So we were, just to summarize, Pastor. Yeah. So we've been going into the same direction that you were going, um, talking about the importance of the fruits 
of the Spirit over the anointing. So the Spirit of God gave us this, um, those two scriptures. One that says, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, that says, when you are walking carnally like that, you're walking as mere men. So which means we're supposed to walk as gods. Amen? Amen. And then Acts 14, verse 11, talks about, um, because of the demonstration that Apostle Paul was, you know, because of what he was demonstrating, the people were seeing him as God. Yeah. So what we are saying is that we want to redefine that anointing and, and help all of us to understand that it is not just the anointing that will make you to be looked as God, but the demonstration of the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So uh, I was telling you that I was um, on Saturday uh, when I went to the shop to buy something I saw that man who you know he packed all his rules nicely and and he said yes I'm human so I need it and so I was saying and he said that you cannot even go to any church now with all of them it's nonsense now so we were saying that okay um, there are two things number one you're not supposed to be a stumbling block to your brother that whereby because of what you've done now he is turning his back to God but at the same time we we're saying that because he says in the book of um, what what is the scripture that says that we have received the spirit the spirits that make us to understand um, freely what God has given unto us because we have that spirit, amen, nothing should separate us from the love of God. So that's what we've, we've been uh, discussing, basically, the importance of the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so, um, that 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 particular if you want to uh, add on to that to add on to to that when we were talking about um so two things um because you're working as men he said because there are division strives among you you're working as men so to us what does it mean we were not supposed to work as men we're supposed to work as god so it is telling us that working as men as god is not just the manifestation of all the signs and wonders that will make us to be seen as God, like in the book of Acts 14, verse 11. Okay. Um, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Amen. Uh, the purpose of the fruit of the Spirit <clears throat> is. Um, we talk about the character of God. Mm. The character of God. The character of God. Mm -hmm. The character of God. Yeah. The purpose of the fruit of the Spirit is for, for us to have the character of God. Yeah. Amen. Since we're supposed to work as God, the purpose of the fruit of the Spirit is for us to have the character of God. Of God yeah. Normally, when you receive Jesus, you have you have the fruit in you. Okay. The the uh, workings of the fruit. That we say we should work out our salvation. Mm -hmm. So the workings of the fruit. You know, when you were not born again. You have the character of Satan. Mm. And I say, you know, the character of Satan is that uh, he, he fights, he lies, he converts, he converts, he do all kinds of things. He's a character. You know? Character is what 
uh, cannot be what is part of you. What you cannot be, what you cannot be removed from you. What you respond to. So where the challenge is, is to to start working that of God. It's going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. The anointing is um, anointing is more like the manifestation of Holy Spirit Himself. Mm -hmm. It comes. That's why the Bible says, um, when you have a faith like a mustard seed, a small, yeah, like mustard seed. But another place, the Bible says, um, let me quickly open. Kora bari kete maro koto romari kete leba. Ro koto roma ba 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 ba. Re kato roma ra kata rama se kete leba ba 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 ba. Re kato roma ba 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 ba. Okay. In a first Corinthians starting. Amen. Yeah, that's fine. Number one. Yes. Okay, I'm he said it's a first Corinthians thirteen. This uh, first Corinthians thirteen three. Let me look for it. Okay. Let's see first Corinthians thirteen two. First Corinthians thirteen two. Say, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and of knowledge. And do I have all faith so that I can move mountains? But I have charity, I have no charity. You have no charity here means that you have no love, you have no fruit in you. So, one thing about gift is the manifestation of Holy Spirit. It comes upon you, you don't have to do anything, you just have one small faith. To connect, you know, it's like how would I put it? It's like I come upon you, I empower you, I wear you like a cloth, mm -hmm. and I squeeze your power. You cannot do anything. I'm the one carrying you along. Mm -hmm. I'm the one doing anything about that I want to do in you. So Holy Spirit has His own manifestation. When they come upon you, that's what they call anointing. When it come upon you, you don't have to do anything. He empowers you, he overwhelm you, you know. You know, it's like you wear a, clo a coat. You know, the coat cannot do anything. You wear a suit, like you wear something. You carry the suit along, you, you know. It doesn't have the power to do anything. Mm -hmm. But he said, if you have no charity, so that's the difference between the fruit of faith and the gift of faith mm -hmm. because the gift of faith is the manifestation of the holy spirit it manifests through you don't need to do anything yeah. mm -hmm. but if you don't have the fruit of the spirit which is called love mm -hmm. you see let's let's do it again first Corinthians 13 2. you say and though i have the gift gift is manifestation of the spirit Gift of prophecy means translation of prophecy, anointing of prophecy, or prophetic anointing. You said, and 
understand all mysteries. Yeah? yeah. And all knowledge. What they call it, the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom. And do I have all faiths? Mm -hmm. Because there's an anointing for faith. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? So that I can, because when you have that anointing, you can, you can scatter anything, you can bulldoze anything, you can, because it is the only spirit that come upon you, is, you want to walk. Let me tell you, one thing is the anointing doesn't, doesn't favor you. It doesn't have any impact in you. And most of the anointing doesn't even solve your problem. It solves people's problem. Mm. Yes. It doesn't solve your problem. I like that. Yeah, because it come upon you. God sees the heart of people. He sees, he sees he what people are looking for. I, I, I read a book. Uh, one, one man of God has a lot of anointing. He does, you know, many things, miracles. But his shoes. <laughs> One of his shoes has bent. Because <laughs> he's been working on yes. it. Yes. And if God really wants to deal with this kind of people, they are looking for money from you. They expect you to. So the Bible says, uh, when you are coming to the house of God, don't come with an empty hand. But another thing is that don't now turn it to is your rights. Like people must give you something. Or people must come to church when you... You know, I know a lot of people that uh, minister of God that will bless you for your business to move forward, you know, for you to have many cars. And the person will not even come to you and give you anything. Because God is, God checks the motive of your heart. Most yeah. times it's God that is in control of those things. Yeah. He's checked with the motive of your heart. He knows what, are you really after people's money? To keep them in or something. Yes. And some people are even desperate and say, okay, if you want only water, only oil, you have to pay 50, you know, 50 pounds, 50,000 naira, 50 dollars, 50 euro, you know, like they've done it. So, you know, if God really wants to punish you, he checks the motive in your heart, he will make sure that nobody will bless you. He wants to see if you are going to be desperate and, you know, begin to manipulate people. Yeah. Because he said, if you, if you have the man, Anointing, you have you have the gift of faith that can move all mountains, but you don't have love. Anyone who does that doesn't have the love of God in him. It means that you are not serving God, you are not worshiping God because service and worshiping means the same thing. You are not worshiping God with your true hearts. Are you getting it? If 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 you do things and you do it with faithfulness, with Purity in your heart with faith in God. Either they bless you or they don't bless you. Glory be to God. Carry your bag and go home. God knows how to. And one thing is that God will check it, check it, check it, check it many times. If you keep passing, they know how to channel people to you. Some people will say, oh, I'm not eating. Uh, then go. Is it not God that called you? Go back to God. Why do you have to be desperate about so it's an anointing upon when it comes upon you, it doesn't that anointing doesn't have anything to do with you. It doesn't do and it doesn't it doesn't bless you with money. It doesn't bless you. That anointing is not for blessing you personally. It's for others. So I, I just don't understand why people just you know you know stay in the place in the tabernacle of anointing and they don't move, they don't want to move to the next level. So so anointing is what comes upon you because because uh, Holy Spirit want to sort out you know problems of people. He sees hunger. He sees you know thirst. He sees that people want to drink water. They want solutions to their problem. And you know God doesn't like that. Uh, especially people who just receive Jesus because they are coming from. The outside world, they know how to work hard to get money. <laughs> so if I come to you, what do you have for me? And because of their age in the kingdom. So he wants to bless them to tell them that, oh, I have what those things you are running after. I have it. I have the original here. So and he will do it, do it, do it until the level like he begins to demand responsibility, responsibility from God, from them. 
And that is when those people are begin to think like, oh, what is the next thing? Is it just coming? Are we just becoming to church for miracle, for signs and wonders? They begin to get tired. Okay, we want to go to the next level. But the challenge is that those ministers they don't want you to go to the next level. They want to keep you as bait so that they always demand this, demand that. But let me tell you, uh, the people of God, this time that thing is going to come to an end very soon. Watch out very soon. We are, are going to the seventh trumpet. And this seventh trumpet is what people uh, interpret as rapture. It's the seventh trumpet. At that time, many things is going to happen. Many things is going to happen. So I will advise you that you should begin to think about God. And you said, if, you are, if I have faith that can remove mountains, but I have no charity, I am nothing. So whatever you are doing in the kingdom of God or in the office of Christ, or let me put it like gift of Christ, make sure you are doing it with the fruit of the Spirit, Amen. which is love. Amen. Which is love. Amen. Even if you are going for administration, some people will say, oh, this, this, uh, that, that. Go for administration, you don't need to collect or or radium. Or what did they put it? Yes. Do it. Do things. You are serving God. Do it and go home. If they give you, fine. But don't demand from it. Don't say, oh, you have to put me in a five-star hotel. If it is a mat or one, uh, uh, whatever that they put on the floor for you to sleep, do it. God is the one that will reward you, will pay you. It's a service unto God. And we should also say that we are working for God. It's wrong for ministers to say that they are working for God. It is God that is working mm -hmm. through us. Nobody is working for God. When you are working for God, when you look at when it says that you are working for God, God is also, you know, renewing your mind and conforming your heart. It's a service unto God. You are not working for God. God is also changing your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, I think... Uh, Amen. There is one, one thing that you said that uh, I just want to highlight when you said that when the anointing comes upon, it is not for you. It's not for you. It is for others. So, that would make us to um, seek more the anointing within that would help us. Yes. Because sometimes you wonder, you, you tell yourself, but that person who is doing up, going up and down, when he reads his Bible, it doesn't it doesn't touch him a little bit or it's as if yes. it is the, the the Bible that the person is reading is not it does not even touch him a little bit. Touch I've, his I've, life. I've lived with a minister touch of God. Touch his character. I've lived with a minister of God. I pray for one guy. For the guy to get a contract. This guy got his contract. Things started moving. And this guy came back to, to the man. Who oh, I want to thank God. What you know what God used you to do in my life. And this man of God was need, needed a phone. And he said, Oh, Pastor, you know, I just bought this uh for myself. I just for this also this and a second phone now i just bought this now for for my wife <laughs> and the parcel was mad ah, you can't even see the phone in my hand i'm using can't you just say oh pastor this is what i you know a gift i have for you or can't you just give me one of the phones you see and because the guy left without giving the man the phone, the man went inside and began to curse the wife. And truly, that caused work because the <coughs> business of that guy went off. And I say, oh, this is no good. Do it. Do it for God. Don't do it. Don't do it for, you know, don't take it personal. For relationship. Yes. Because the Bible says God is a God of knowledge by Him. Actions. Actions are way. It checks the motives mm -hmm. of our hearts. It checks the motive of our hearts. 
can read it in Second Samuel. No, First Samuel two. He said, "Actions are weights." There is something that one thing about God that He has already put in all of us. Amen. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes it says. Uh, he has put eternity in our hearts. Yes, he has put eternity in our hearts. Amen. He said, but the problem is that man cannot fathom this eternity. Amen. And it so is. there are so many things within us. God knows how to lift you up. If you are faithful and obedient, walking on that race that is set before you. Imagine Jesus, all the people that Jesus healed. Do you know what he said? He said, bed has house. Mm. You know? He said, but a man, a son of God doesn't want know, he doesn't have where to lay his age. Mm. There's a way he puts it. Let me look for it. Bed has nets. And uh, this is a particular scripture, um, another one. I like how he put it. I just want to. Yes. He said, Folk 6. Yes. Matthew 8 20. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can read it. You can read from 19. 19. And the certain scribe came and yeah. said unto him, Master, I will follow thee with the whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his, his head. head. You see? You see the kind of life that Jesus lived. Someone that goes everywhere and begins to do goods, ill people from all their sickness. He doesn't have a place of his own. Somebody say, I want to follow you. You say, ah, if you follow me everywhere, I don't have a place. I don't have an accommodation for you to come and stay in my house. You see? You know, Jesus said he became poor so that we can become rich. Now, people are, you know, in Tapi like, oh, you know, everything that Jesus did was because, uh, and what what that meant was it's not physical money. Because he's, he's already rich in mercy. He has light. You know, what it means to be rich is to have light and to have life in you. That is what it means to be rich. But he became poor. So that we can become rich. So that we can be transferred. Yes. Amen. It's not financial money. Amen. If it is financial money, Jesus will not say, seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added. Amen. He will say, seek money. Don't worry, we will look for how to, for you, when you are seeking money, we will redirect your path and begin to seek for the kingdom. Money no. Money is not a problem to Jesus. They came to Jesus, you know, to pay tax. He didn't have, but he has God. He knows how to get things done. The secret is that he knows how to say, Father, I thank you because you've heard me. And because of that alone, doors will be open. Amen. Yes. He will say, Father, I thank you because... You've heard me. Amen. That's a prayer of faith. Amen. Prayer of faith, you know, you don't have money to eat. I say, Father, I thank you because you've heard me. Amen. And somebody will come. I remember one day I was at home. That was when I was in Lagos. I don't have money. I don't have food. I don't have anything. And I never thought that another pastor, Pastor Ogu, Another pastor came and he said, Pastor Israel, God said I should come and give you this money. 
is in my tithe. I want to go and pay it in the church. But God said, you should come and give it to my son. I said, eh? How can you just, how did God say it? <laughs> he said, go and give this money to. That is God. He knows your needs. Did not even ask I didn't even ask. Someone if you are faithful, he knows how to do those things. It's better like that than you are, you know, manipulating people. Oh, I have school. I have I have school fees to pay for my children. I have house rent to pay for my you know house. I have I've not hitting my children. I've not hitting. Which father will will see his children? I will not hit since three days. I will not. So because of that, you have to now be desperate and begin to manipulate people. No. Say it profited nothing when you have all things and you don't have fruit of the spirit in you. You don't have the anointing with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Do you Amen. want to pray for you? Do you want to hide anything? Yes. Sister. No, it's okay. Amen. Pastor, you go go ahead and conclude since you came in uh okay. to the end. So you can see Jesus has no he had no house. Mm -hmm. He had nothing, no money, physical money. Exactly. When they asked him for tax, he told one of the disciples to go to the water to the fish water and the first fish he catches he will see what money inside of it. So he lived by faith. Mm -hmm. By faith. You know, no nobody has ever seen any scripture in the Bible where you know every night Jesus, you know, and the Bible says and, and let's say and the Bible says that Jesus went home to sleep. <laughs> no home for him. You see? So that is the kind of life that God wants us to have. And it's a life of faith. Of course, God knows that you have needs. You have house rents. You have this, you have that. He knows how to do those things. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone and their heart belong to him. Mm -hmm. He said the heart is the Lord. Somebody who has the whole heart. You mean that he doesn't have one thousand pounds to give you? <laughs> it will disturb some people. People you don't know. It will go and disturb them. Yeah. Sometimes the Lord will tell you, go and go and give it this to this person. Somebody you don't know. If you know that you can don't you know it's good to you know so I know some people that are uh called into full time minister ministry. I know people who are already working and God will tell them, go and resign. Do this work fully. Yeah? And, you know, I, 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 I've heard that. But you see Paul in the Bible. He was full time. Mm -hmm. He got to a time because he knew how to do things. He got to a time, you know, he went into tenting and he began to do things. I'm not saying you should go against the will of God. Are you getting it? I don't think like God ever told Paul to go into full time. Mm. But he went into full time. Are you getting it? So what yeah. I'm trying to say is if God says full time, full time. If God says part time, part time. And some people, God doesn't even call them. They just say that, oh, this thing is making money. Let me go into it. And they went into it. No, to be honest, <laughs> get your divination. Yeah. Have the scripts. <laughs> Of what God says. Many churches closed up during the uh, coronavirus because God didn't call them. Mm -hmm. They have big, you know, gigantic building and they have to close up. How are you getting it? Because God didn't call them. You just saw that, oh, this thing is making money. I remember when I first came, one of the Pastor's friends was saying, ah, wow, I think we have to, that we have. That I, that he, I think he is going, he too is going to go into a ministry that is going to, you know, to raise money and begin to. Those are the things many people are doing. Mm -hmm. Many people. Um, so just. Yeah, and yeah, some are not even born again. 
Yeah, earthly possession. We even know once one guy used to come to church that time, he told one of a uh, member that, oh, we sh they should go and open a church <laughs> because because it's of tight and money yeah, and because it's like, they feel it's an easy way to make the money. I can, I, I just pity you. One day, evil spirit will come and give you a dirty slap. That's why you know that <laughs> pastoral work is <laughs> not just to raise money. <laughs> <laughs> you, they will bring some if God want to dis if God want to disgrace you or if we want to disgrace you, it will they will just bring somebody who is possessed with evil spirits and they will come and give you a dirty slap and that day you will know that if you are not called you don't go into this thing. Because your life must be full time connect connected with Holy Spirit and you must, you know, you know. In, you must see that as a journey. Anything you do that is not the love of God, but the love of this world. So when God says, if you have this, you have this, but you don't have charity in you, yeah, it means that you have another kind of love, mm -hmm. which is the love of this world. Because yeah. if you don't have the love of this world, why will you be manipulating people? Sorry, this is not about going against ministers, but we can see now in the UK, it's very, very difficult for people to come to church. Very difficult now. Is that not one woman that did that say, Oh, I don't want to go to a particular church because uh, this they raise this, they raise that, they raise this, they raise that, that. Another one of our members will say, Don't worry, just be coming into our church, we don't raise anything. He said, Well, I, I will be thinking about it. Because Churches right now, they just race, 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 race. Competing with each other. Yes. They just raise money, raise money, raise money. Mm. And it's, it's not done. It's like the unpopular. You see, Jesus calls the Pharisees. He said, You don't. He said, I call you because people want to enter into the kingdom. You don't want them to enter. You yourself, you don't want to enter. Then allow other people to enter. Meaning that let your life be an example of purity. That people will see you and say, ah, which church is that? Some people want to give prophecy because they want people to come to their church. No. I was in a one shop one day. I was telling brethren about this, this, that, that. They say, what, where is your church? What is the name of your church? I say, forget about that one. <laughs> Nobody is supposed to say the name of my church is this. I say, no, let's forget about this thing. Let's forget about the name of the church. I'm not saying this thing because of the name of the church. Are you getting it? I say forget about that one. Let's see the manifestation of this thing first. When it works, ahead, then, then you want to come. But I'm not saying, I don't want you to see that I'm saying this thing because I me, mean, I like to divine things. I don't want you to say this thing like because I'm trying to show power, manifest that I have all this. See, anointing can come upon anyone. Even signs and wonders, anybody can do it. Every believer is supposed to know how to do this thing. Because it's the gift of the Spirit. As long as you have the Spirit of God in you, mm. you have this gift. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise yeah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank, thank you. you. Show us the ancient foam. Lead us along eternal highways. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. Show us the ancient Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name, we receive that word in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will help us to check our motives to everything that we do will be because of the Lord of God. In Jesus' name. The Lord will help us. Amen. Amen. God bless.
Shalom, people of God. You are blessed and highly favored. You are blessed and highly favored. You receive your